How and when does steel melt? Steel melts at temperatures of 2750 degrees Fahrenheit and above, attained only in a blast furnace or when a powerful incendiary such as thermite is used. Steel or any substance that is burned will never become hotter than the temperature of the fire or heat applied to it. An open-air hydrocarbon fire reaches a maximal temperature of some 1200 degrees Fahrenheit in a dirty or uncontrolled burn, characterized by red-orange flames. Red-orange flames are what we saw on September 11th. Even the fireball caused by the plane strike was red-orange. A controlled burn falls between a dirty burn like a fireplace and a controlled environment, the blast furnace. A controlled burn employs a regulated mix of air and fuel, an example being your gas stove or the engine in your car. You can fire up your gas stove all day long, making soup, roasting a duck, or simmering a stew. Made of steel, your stove will not melt, and nor will your pots and pans. This is a kerosene heater designed for use in any ordinary house. The heater runs on jet grade kerosene contained in this tank. Made of steel, the heater can operate all night and all day. The kerosene fumes ignite and burn inside it, never causing even the smallest part of this heater to weaken or melt. Yet we were led to believe that these tremendous buildings, framed in steel and surfaced in aluminum, totally collapsed from small scattered fires and 90 minutes of smoke. Take note of these hurtling beams thrown laterally outward as the tower comes to earth. Would fire have the strength to eject such huge hunks of metal? MIT engineering professor Thomas Eager's 2001 paper is officially considered the academic standard for explaining the World Trade Center collapses. In it, he tells us that steel loses half its strength at 650 degrees Celsius and that the fires that day did not get much hotter than this. He stresses, however, that the fires did not burn evenly. It was the uneven temperatures that caused the steel to deform and some of the floors to fail. These falling floors brought down the whole building. While it was impossible for the fuel-rich diffuse flame fire to burn at a temperature high enough to melt the steel, its quick ignition and intense heat caused the steel to lose at least half its strength and to deform, causing buckling or crippling. This weakening and deformation caused a few floors to fall, while the weight of the stories above them crushed the floors below, initiating a domino collapse. In plain language, straight from MIT.